In this tutorial, we're going to discuss the concept of reentrant locks, also known as R locks. Okay, so these locks are a kind of special variant of the regular locks. Okay, here we have our regular lock class, and then we have R locks over here. Okay, so what's the difference and how does it work? Okay, so that's what this video is all about. Now, I hope you guys know about regular locks, okay? Because if you don't, there's a whole video I have on that in the description below. It explains everything, like what are locks, why do we need them, and all kinds of things related to race conditions and all that, okay? So definitely check that out later, okay? But anyways, back to our locks. Basically, these are a special variant that are sometimes required underneath certain scenarios, okay? And that scenario, I actually have coded over here to save us some time, okay? So we have two functions here. We have a fun function called task1 and a function called tax 2 On the surface, they both look fairly normal. They look like two separate functions which attempt to acquire a lock. Once they acquire it, they perform an operation, then they let go of the lock. It seems pretty normal, pretty normal thread lock stuff. Okay, task one does the same thing. But you notice one slightly weird addition. There's a function call to task two inside task one. Okay, now let me just explain what's going on here. Task one is acquiring this lock object. Okay, and once it acquires it, it calls task two. And then task two attempts to acquire the same lock. Okay, they're all, they're all attempting to acquire this lock object we have over here. Okay, now this is the problem, right? Because a lock can only be acquired once. Okay, now normally what would happen is that task two is gonna wait for the lock, right? It's gonna attempt to acquire the lock, but it will not be able to acquire it. And why is that? Because it is already acquired by task one. But the weird thing is that the task two will never acquire that lock. Why? Because task one is never gonna release that lock until task two finishes its execution. And task two is never gonna finish its execution until it acquires the lock. So we're kind of stuck in a eternal loop here. And if I run this code now, you'll see that we're stuck, okay? Task 1 is attempting to acquire the lock, task 1 has acquired the lock, and task 2 is now attempting to acquire the lock, but it is never going to acquire it, and now we're stuck in an infinite loop, and this code will never proceed further. Okay? So now we're stuck. What do we do? Well, first of all, you could say, don't call task 2 inside task 1. But sometimes we may need to. Okay? There may be a situation where you need to do this. So we can't really say that. Okay, and besides, my job here is to explain where our locks are used. Okay, and if you're watching this, I assume maybe you have some place you want to use them, or maybe you think you might need them in the future. So that's why we're talking about this very odd scenario right now. Okay, so let me show you something. I'm going to switch this lock to an R lock. And once again, no extra parameters. We just need a regular R lock. Okay. Now, now this lock is now a R lock, okay? It's not a normal lock, it's a, it's a R lock, a re-entrant lock. And now if I run this code, let's see what happens. Okay, look, it proceeded. And it finished this execution, okay? How was this possible? Well, let me tell you what. A re-entrant lock allows for a lock to be acquired again underneath a certain circumstance. Normally that's a rule, right? A lock can never be acquired again until it is released by its thread, okay? But re-entrant locks allow the reacquiring of a lock if it's on a different recursion level, if it's in a recursive call, okay? So basically what I'm saying here is that tasks two is allowed to acquire this lock it's allowed to acquire it because it's, it, it's a recursive call. It's located within a recursive call. So that's why it's actually allowed to acquire it. Okay, this is a very unique circumstance in which it's actually allowed. So that's basically the concept of re-entrant locks. Okay, now 
it's important to remember a few things here. Task two, okay, when it releases its lock, only then can task two actually proceed. Because until it release, releases its lock and finishes its execution, task one is never going to proceed. And we can see this from the output here. Task two attempted to acquire the lock. Task two acquired the lock, even though task one had already acquired it. Then task two released the lock and only and only then could task one release the lock and finish. Okay. So that's just something I wanted to explain here. And there's one more thing I'm going to do just to cement this concept with you guys is to create a task three. Okay. Change these over here and just remove that and create a new thread. Okay. Call this thread thread two and then duplicate everything for thread two. Okay. And do this. I just want to show you guys that that an R lock is still a regular lock. Okay. I just want to show it to you guys that uh, task three will not be able to acquire the lock until task one is done with it. Okay. Just watch. Watch the output. Uh, hold on. All right. And what is up with that output? Oh. Oh, the output is messing up again. Okay, don't worry. So you see this commented outline here again? This is actually very common with print statements when you're dealing with multiple threads and they're writing to the console at the same time. This can actually happen. So just use this version of the print statement instead. Okay, it'll make sure everything prints out just fine. Okay, so here we go. Watch. All right, so let's take a look at the output here. So first we have task one, acquire, it's attempting to acquire it. Task one acquired it immediately. Task three is now attempting to acquire it, but it cannot, okay? Task two attempts to acquire it, and it actually can because it's on a different recursive level, okay? It's one level deeper. And likewise, if task two makes an, another recursive call, okay? If it makes an, an, another recursive call, just like task one did, then that recursive call will also be able to acquire the lock because it's a re-entrant lock, right? So task two acquired it, it released it, and only and only then did task one, you know, release its lock, and only then could task three actually acquire the lock and then release it, okay? So it's still a regular lock, but it allows for the lock to be acquired again in recursive scenarios. That's why I also like to call this lock a recursive lock. Okay, so that's the concept in today's video. I hope you guys understood it. I hope you guys enjoyed the, the video. If you do, then leave a like, leave a comment, let me know what you thought. And do subscribe to the channel because we have a lot more thread and lock related content coming out. We have one video on file lock that I have yet to make. So that's going to be a pretty interesting concept as well. Okay. So yeah, see you guys in a later video. Bye then.